So what do you do when all of your amps break? Is it possible to keep recording or even just keep playing? Well, that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. I was originally planning on releasing a video on bass guitar next, but over this past week, my main guitar amplifier went down. And so I dusted off my backup amplifier, fired it up, and guess what? It didn't work either. So I wanted to share with you how I navigate roadblocks like this without losing time and momentum in the recording process. In this video, we'll look at amp modeler plugins as high quality yet affordable backup options to real amplifiers. We'll also look at how these fit into your recording workflow, how to minimize latency when using these plugins, how to fit your existing pedal board into this, and considerations when purchasing these amp modeler plugins. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, my main amp, a Mesa Boogie Mark V, went down this past week. And I use it for everything, including Channel 1 as a pedal platform. Also, I think a lot of people miss how incredible Channel 2 Crunch is, especially when paired with something like a woodshed compressor from Sir. That said, none of this matters because the amp is not working. So a simple option for me was to use a backup amplifier, which I had. It's an old Crate Vintage Club that has been collecting some dust for years. I made a special head enclosure for it because I don't have room for another combo in this room. However, I quickly discovered that amp wasn't working either. Back to the drawing board. Longer term, I have my eyes on a Cerbella as a solid, well-built tank that will go the distance, but this doesn't solve the problem in front of me right now. I have a whiteboard with about 12 songs on it, and I need to keep writing and recording, so what can I do? I want to share with you a highly affordable, great sounding alternative that every recording guitarist should have, Amp Modeling Plugins. There are two companies whose plugins I absolutely love. The first is ML Sound Lab, and the second is Mercurial Audio. These plugins work just like the reverb, delay, and drum plugins that we used in previous videos, and will sound very close to playing through a real amp when used right. Here's a sample recording I did a couple years ago comparing my Mesa Boogie Mark V, the real amplifier, to Mercurial's Reaxis amp modeling plugin. I don't know about you, but for 1 25th the price of the real amp, I think those two are pretty close. I'll walk through how to use these in just a minute, but first let me share a little bit more about what they offer. ML Sound Lab offers an array of both amp modeling plugins and cabinet impulse responses, and we'll look at the latter in a future video. But I use ML Sound Lab's ML5 amp plugin, which is modeled after, you guessed it, the Mesa Boogie Mark V. You can currently get this for a little over $100. ML Sound Lab also has plugins for various Marshall based amps, a dual rectifier, a diesel, and others. Mercurial has several amp plugins as well. I use their Reaxis plugin, which is modeled after the legendary Mesa Boogie Triaxis preamp. 
This currently goes for about 60 bucks on their website. Mercurio also has plugins based on the Bogner Ecstasy and several Marshalls and an Angle Amp as well. Between these two companies, you can't go wrong. That said, I'd love to hear in the comments below which amp modeling plugins you use. And using these plugins is simple. Just run a cable from your guitar directly to the quarter inch in for instruments on your interface. If you don't have a quarter inch instrument in on your interface, you'll need to use a direct box, which is a device that basically converts instrument and line level signals to microphone level, which you can then run into an XLR in like what you would use for a microphone. And just a word of caution, simply converting the connector type from quarter inch to XLR will not work. The level coming out of your guitar is much hotter than what the interface expects for a microphone input. Doing this would overdrive the input and not the good kind of overdrive. Next, add the plugin to your DAW. Up to this point, we've added plugins by clicking on effects. And this applies the effects post input, meaning that it does not affect the raw sound recorded in your DAW, but adds this processing afterward. You can add your amp plugins here. However, I prefer to use them as input effects. This applies them prior to what Reaper records. And the benefit of this is that once you capture the sound, you no longer need that plugin. And this can be helpful if you wanna send your project around to somebody else or move it between computers. To do this, arm the track for recording and then select In Effects. I'll add both plugins to this track, but you really only wanna have one enabled at a time. Also, remember to select your input source and make sure that record monitoring is enabled. While I typically prefer to add effects like delay and reverb onto effects buses, I'll sometimes just add them directly to this track, post input, so I can use this as a template for easy reuse for when I just wanna plug into my DAW and play. Let's give this a listen first without the amp plugin. And now with the plugin turned on, set to the clean channel. And let's try out the other two channels as well. If you're familiar with the Mesa Boogie Mark V amplifier, you know that it has three channels with additional toggles on each channel for different amp modes. At the top of ML5, you can select the amp channel along with the channels mode under the amp menu. For example, the Mark V has clean, fat, and tweed on channel one, which you can see the corresponding amps under this menu. You can also bring up presets under the preset menu or create your own that you can save. On each channel, you can dial in the gain, master level, presence, treble, mids, and bass, just like the real amp. And you can toggle between each of the channel's modes and select different voicings like normal and bold. On the right side of the amp is the classic boogie style graphic EQ. Mesa's Mark series amps are known for having their treble, mid, and bass controls before the gain circuitry, which interacts with the gain differently from a lot of other amps. For example, the bass control set to 12 o'clock, which would be normal for a lot of amps, will result in a flubby bottom end sound on the higher gain channels. So it's common to dial that way back or even turn it off. Then what happens is on the graphic EQ, you can dial that back in after the gain circuitry. Guitarists like John Petrucci are known for dialing in a classic V shape like you see on the screen. All of this is very familiar to anyone who has worked a Mark V or similar amplifier. To the right of the EQ, you can toggle effects on and off within the plugin. Clicking on the pedal board button above will show you the effects available. I typically leave these off and use effects like Reaper's delay instead because I can get that big stereo sound, whereas the delay sound here is just mono. Finally, the last toggle allows you to choose between ML's built-in cab impulse responses or you can load your own. 
Plugins like this look for the same impulse responses or IR format that is used in hardware units like SIR's reactive load IR box. Reaxis is based on Mesa Boogie's classic triaxis rack mount preamplifier. This preamp has eight different selectable modes designed after classic boogie amps, which can be selected on the right side. There are two clean modes under the rhythm channel, three lead modes under lead one, and three lead modes under lead two. To the left, you can dial in the gain, treble, mid, bass, drive, master, presence, and dynamic voice. And dynamic voice is like a preset graphic EQ similar to the Mark V graphic EQ, and higher values tend to represent more extreme EQ curves. Above the preamp is the power amp where you can dial in the volume, presence, excursion, which is essentially like a power amp voicing, and then how the power tubes are configured. At the top of the screen, you can select presets or save your own. Reaxis comes inside what Mercurial is calling AmpBox, which is basically a free plug-in wrapper for all of their amps. For example, next to the preamp, I can select other purchased amps like their Euphoria, which is based on a Bogner Ecstasy. AmpBox contains additional effects like gate, graphic EQ, wah, overdrive, distortion, parametric EQ, chorus, delay, and reverb. However, like ML5, I find that I stick to the plugin for amp sounds, but then use Reaper and third-party effects for things like delay and reverb. Now, anytime you monitor your playing through an interface, you're going to experience some amount of latency. And latency is basically a lag between when you play a note and when you hear it, and is typically measured in milliseconds. If this latency is too large, the gap between what you hear and what you play will feel unnatural. And personally, I find that a latency approaching 10 milliseconds makes the pick feel sticky against the strings. We can control this latency by adjusting the number of samples used by your audio interface as a buffer. A buffer is basically the number of samples collected before your interface processes them. Longer buffers make audio processing less taxing on your computer's resources, while shorter buffers reduce the time between when your interface receives the audio and when you hear it. 
But if your buffer is too small, you'll start to hear crackling in your audio. Most audio interfaces have a control panel where you can adjust the samples. 512 samples will produce a latency of around 10 to 12 milliseconds, while 256 will be half of that. I find that 256 works well. To figure out your exact latency, just divide your sample size, 256, by your sample rate, 44,100, which will give you your latency in seconds, which you can then convert to milliseconds. So what about your pedal board with overdrive pedals? Will the clean channel of amp modelers work as a pedal platform? Well, mostly depending on how you use them. It's not exactly one-to-one -one because your analog pedal sound will first need to be converted to digital before being processed by the amp modeler plugin. Somewhere in this process, tones seem to get a little bit more compressed compared to just playing into the front of an amplifier, especially on the lower strings and neck pickups. I've tried putting things like EQs and multiband compressors before the amp modeler plugin, but nothing seems to work quite right. That said, some sounds are still very usable. Here are a few examples using Wampler's Dual Fusion and Gearbox pedals. Now, one pedal that does seem to work well is a compressor pedal. I like to use Sir's Woodshed Compressor and run this into channel two of the Mark V, and it seems to work well on amp modelers too. Let's give it a listen. There are other companies out there making amp modeler plugins, and I've used some of them too but I keep coming back to these two. That said, here are a few final considerations when choosing amp modeler plugins. First, try before you buy. Most of these companies will provide you a demo that you can download. Second, trust your ears more than marketing labels like licensed by XYZ amp vendor or artist signature. Third, will you need to purchase a separate platform to use your purchased amps? In other words, are there additional fees on top of the price for the amp modeler plugin just to make it work? Fourth, are there any hardware requirements? For example, some vendors that sell audio interfaces might make their plugins just compatible with those interfaces. And fifth, and often overlooked, investigate how your plugins are authenticated. Does the company use a third party company to authenticate your plugins? And what happens if their servers go down or the USB dongle that is required goes bad? Do you really want to deal with a middleman who has little to no motivation to help you out? For example, I once had to pay about $100 to a third party to gain access to software keys that I had already purchased and owned because their USB authentication device failed. On the other hand, I can personally attest to the responsiveness of ML Sound Lab. I recently built a new computer. My existing keys were registered to my old device, so I sent them an email and for free, I had a new license key in my inbox the next day. Let's review what we've learned. First, amps will break, but that doesn't mean that you cannot keep recording. Amp modeling has come so far that it can be difficult to tell the real amp from a plugin. And if you don't have the money to drop on a good amp right now, this is a great way to get your foot in the door to get some quality sounds. Second, amp modelers work well on input effects so your DAW captures the sound after it has been processed by the plugin.
Third, adjust latency by reducing the amount of samples used to buffer your audio by your interface. Fourth, you can sometimes use overdrive pedals from your pedal board to get usable sounds, but just know that it's not exactly one-to-one. -one. And fifth, try before you buy, trust your ears more than marketing language, and confirm your plugin's requirements before purchasing.